Hi everyone, my name is Francesca Iannuzzi and I am here to share with you all my scar story. Before I begin, I just want to say that I am only making this video to help those who have something similar going on with them or have had something similar happen to them and also to tell you all my story since I get so many questions constantly about what happened to me um, and I am not looking for sympathy in any way, I am just here to share my story. And I want to say that if you have any questions throughout this video at any time, please feel free to leave them in the comment section below. And um, also, I will have my social media linked down below, and you can tweet me, Instagram me, anything like that, and I will be happy to answer any questions you have. So, with that being said, I am just going to get started. Um, to begin, I recently have just become very comfortable talking about this situation and the thing that, is, that has happened to me with regarding my chest and my face and things like that. Um, and I want to apologize in advance if I do get emotional during this video. It's something that I have just recently, like I said, become very comfortable talking about and it's still very hard for me to talk about. Um, it was a big part of my life and it has affected me in many ways and like I said, I just want to apologize if I do get, um, get emotional um, throughout this video. Anyway, um, I started getting acne in third grade, which is very young to get acne. I mean, I didn't have bad acne, I just had zits, like I would get zits here and there. So I started out getting facials when I was in third grade, like I said, and those helped. I mean, they didn't really like do much for me, but they, they did help somewhat. Um, and you know, just time went on, time went on, and my acne just never really got better, it kind of just got worse. Um, so I want to say in middle school, sometime in middle school, my parents decided to take me to a, to a dermatologist and, um, you know, they basically put me on everything from medicated face washes, face creams, um, pills, antibiotics, anything that could basically help with my acne. I've tried anything and everything that is on the market from high end to low end. I have tried it all and nothing seemed to work for me. So, my freshman year of high school, my parents decided to take me to a new, dermat new dermatologist, and I've seen many dermatologists in my life so far, um, so with that being said, I wasn't very keen on seeing another one, simply because I know the process of it, and it's very just, it's long, and it's not fun, no one really wants to do it. So, anyway, I had agreed to go see a new dermatologist, even though I didn't really want to, and I didn't have a good vibe as soon as I walked into the office. I have no idea why, I just didn't. Um, but my mom thought it would be a good idea, because maybe he had some type, of, um, some type of solution to my acne problem, and maybe I can get it solved for good. So, like I said, we went. And um, I sat down with him and he immediately had suggested that I go on Accutane. And for those of you who do not know, Accutane is a pill that you take. And what it does is it basically cuts out all the vitamin A of your body and um, helps to solve your acne and your acne problems. So for me, the whole point of me going on Accutane was to basically cure my acne since it's it, Accutane is known to be the miracle drug and works for the majority of people who take it. So I really wasn't happy to hear that because it's very heartbreaking to hear that you know your acne is so bad and the only thing that you that will work for you is to go on the strongest medication that's on the market for acne. So he basically sat down with me, told me everything that there is about Accutane, told me the risks, told me what I needed to know, told me you know how long the process would be, everything of that matter. And anyway, I had, you know, went home with my family, discussed it some more, and I was not happy to hear that I had to go on Accutane, or that it would be a good idea that I go on Accutane. So I took a very long time to decide if I wanted to, since I knew the risks and kind of the positives of Accutane, I kind of had to weigh out my options. And um, after three months of trying to figure out if I wanted to go on this medication, I decided that I would like to give it a try. So, I went back to the dermatologist and he told me that I needed to get my blood drawn some before I started my, um, my course of Accutane. So, I went to get my blood drawn and the reason for this is they need to make sure all the levels in your body are okay before you go on this medication because this medication is very strong. And just to kind of give you an idea of how strong this medication is, you have to get your blood drawn every single month um, while on this medication and you cannot get pregnant, you cannot be pregnant while you're on this medication because your baby will have severe birth defects um, and you have to go through routine 
um, checkups with your dermatologist every single month and in order to get your prescription filled you have to go actually contact the website or not the website the company who makes Accutane and go through a list of processes processes a list of questions online um, and answer things about Accutane every single month in order to get your prescription filled so I started on uh, my first dose of Accutane and they have, I guess, like a kind of a, an idea of where, what levels you should be on and how much they, you should be taking per day. So I started at my, I guess you could say, minimum level. And my dermatologist had said, you know, that if we need to, we can increase it, we could decrease it, just depending on how my body was reacting to the medication. So we started at my minimum level, and that was fine for a few months. He had told me that my acne was going to get severely worse before it got better so I kind of had to go through a rough stage in order to get over the hump and then my acne would clear for good. So I knew what I had in store for me and I knew what to expect most of the time. I kind of knew what to expect. Um, so like I was saying my acne was never you know that severe. I only had it on my face. I never had it on my chest. I never had it on my back. Simply my face and I mean it was bad on my face but it wasn't present anywhere else on my body so um, I only thought that it would affect my face and nothing else so being on this medication um, like I said you have to go back to the doctor all the time just to check up because this medication is very very strong and um, everything was fine for the first couple months um, but then I started to notice that I was getting acne on my chest and on my back and um, it was so painful. I just remember I could not fall asleep at night because hurting my or putting my face on the pillow was so painful. Just to like even touch something so soft as a pillow to my face would kill. And then, you know, carrying a backpack around school um, would hurt so badly because the weight of a backpack pressing on your shoulders where you have really bad acne. I couldn't wear tight shirts. I couldn't wear anything that would basically touch my my skin where I had acne because it would hurt so badly and when you're on Accutane your skin gets very inflamed and swells a lot so that didn't help at all it actually made it probably ten times worse so um, that was fine and I knew that um, I kinda just had to suck it up because I knew that it was gonna get better in a few months but my dermatologist had um, suggested in the beginning about steroids and um, steroid injections and basically they're only to help with inflammation, swelling, and things of that matter. So you can get them injected into your acne or you can take pills such as um, prednisone or anything like that. So um, my acne at the time had gotten so painful that I went back to the doctor and asked him about going on some type of steroid. And he at the time didn't think it was a good idea or didn't think it was necessary. So we just continued on and I knew that I kind of just had to suck it up and deal with it because... It would get better soon, and I hoped that the soon would be right around the corner. But unfortunately, that hump that I thought was right around the corner really wasn't right around the corner. And um, I started to get these blisters or some type of rash, open wound, on my chest. And they were about the size of quarters. Um, and I started with maybe two. And then I started to notice that they were getting bigger and they were spreading to different areas of my chest. So as you can see, I have scars now here, um, and I'm going to talk about that in a little bit. But I really only had these two big ones to begin with, and now I had I started to get them all the way down, like my cleavage area. I have some of them over here that I, you really can't see because they're small. But I started to get them like just randomly all over the place, and I had no idea what was wrong. And so. I ended up going back to the dermatologist and he looked at me and he didn't know what was wrong. He kind of just thought that it was part of me being on Accutane, that it was some type of acne issue that um, would be fixed with being on the medication. So he had given me some type of gel to help um, dry it up and if any of you who live around me, I'm sure some of you are watching this video, but um, when you're a freshman in high school, you take you take HOPE, which is kind of like a health and um, physical education class. And with that, you have to be outside a lot. And I live in the state of Florida, so it's very hot here, especially close to summer. And um, 
with this gel, I wasn't able to get my chest wet. I wasn't able to get the area around my chest wet. I couldn't sweat. I had to be very careful that, you know, nothing of the surrounding area got wet because basically it would take the gel off, which would in turn defeat the whole purpose of me having it on my chest in the first place. So I had to walk around with a huge bandage on my chest, not just like a band-aid because a band-aid wouldn't cover it. I had to walk around with a, like a piece of gauze and tape on my chest. And let me mind you, this was so painful because the gel would be stuck to my chest and then the gauze would get stuck to the gel. And to have an open wound, it's kind of like taking, if you have a burn, for example, or if you have, if you cut your skin open, I'm sorry, there's noise outside, but if you, if you had cut your skin open and then you were to put some type of cream and then the bandage on top and the bandage kind of got stuck in the, in the open wound and you were to take it off, that's what kind of, that's what it kind of felt like every time I would have to change my bandage. And so I couldn't participate in any type of hope. I couldn't participate in any type of um, outdoor activities. I basically had to tell my hope teacher that I wasn't able to um, continue with the course because I had to keep my chest dry and I couldn't sweat. So I hoped that this um, gel that the dermatologist was having me put on my chest would help um, kind of solve the issue, whatever was happening, and, um, you know, as time went on, I was still taking the medication, and, um, it was getting closer to summer, and for me, I love being outside, I love to swim, I love being at the beach, and knowing that I wasn't able to get wet, or I couldn't go in the water, couldn't go to the beach, um, was very, like, sad. It was saddening to me because I want to be able to enjoy my summer. Furthermore, I was traveling a lot and I wanted to be able to experience things and not have like any type of um, thing holding me back. And so, um, you know, the dermatologist just said to me that it was going to get better. And anyway, time, like I said, got closer towards summer and um, nothing. I really wasn't seeing any type of progress and anything, my chest had just gotten worse. So my mom thought it would be a good idea for me to go see a wound care specialist. And the wound care specialist wasn't in the town that I live in. It was a few towns away. So we drove up there and he, um, I went to see him. And <laughs> this is the part where I'm probably going to get emotional because this is the hard part for me to talk about. But um, I went to see him and he only sees geriatric patients, which, which means that you're older. And he doesn't see anyone who's under 18. And for some reason he was able to see me. I really am not sure of the cause or the reason why he saw me in the first place, but I'm very thankful that he did. Um, so I'm waiting in the waiting room and they, I remember they take pictures before, before your treatment and after. So it kind of like, is like a before and after, like I said, and, um, would kind of, um, you know, kind of help to see like the progress that you've made. So, um, I remember <laughs> he walked into the room where I was and he looked at my chest and his jaw completely dropped. Um, and to see a doctor who is specialized in this kind of, you know, this kind of, this type of, um, this type of field, um, to see his facial expression just completely drop to the floor was so heartbreaking to me because you know, you're sitting in the chair, you have absolutely no idea what's going on, and to see the doctor who's supposed to help you know everything about the issue that you have, have absolutely no idea what's wrong with you is so scary and so, um, so, just like so heartbreaking. Um, so he had basically looked at me and was in complete shock, and he had no idea what was going on with me. He told me that he thought there was some type of infection in my body that had caused me to have this weird reaction and you know like the, the I might have had like an open zit or something and it got infected but he really wasn't sure so um what they had to do was basically um go inside of me and see what the issue was so in order for them to do that they had to take my bandage off and the only way I was able to get my bandage off for them, the only way for them to get my bandage off was to basically like rip it off when it was embedded in my skin. And um, the gel that the previous dermatologist had given to me actually adhered itself to the surrounding area of my open blisters. And it was 
basically like trying to attach itself to my skin and they had to get inside so the only way for them to do that was to take a razor blade straight to my chest <laughs> and slice it all off and I'm just going to say that I was not numb for any of this I felt everything that you could possibly imagine it was the worst pain I have ever felt in my entire life and I will not wish that upon anyone it was terrible um, I remember just sitting in the chair screaming bloody murder um, and I actually only had let him do two out of however many that there were and um, he you know had to go in take cultures and um, send them to a lab to see what they can find and he had given me this type of um, topical antibiotic that had honey in it that basically is supposed to help draw everything out like any of the infection out and help heal and for those of you who don't know honey is a very good thing um, it's called like earth's natural healer because basically that's what it does it heals so um, I had put this you know cream on and I kept the bandage on my chest and the only way for me to get the bandage off my chest at the time was to soak it in water so I would have to submerge my whole body into a bathtub full of water in order to rip my bandage off and um, that went well for the first couple days and then I remember I was sitting at the dinner table with my family one night for dinner and I had just gotten out of the shower so I had applied a new bandage with new gel everything like that and um, I was sitting at the dinner table and I remember my body just completely froze I had no idea what was going on um, I started to get very very sharp pains in my chest and I thought something was happening to me I had never stopped recording again but like I was saying um, I had just gotten out of the shower and um, I applied a new bandage with new a new um, set of topical antibiotic with the honey in it and I went to sit down at dinner with my family and um, I remember just sitting down eating talking to my family like everything's fine you know whatever and all of a sudden my body completely froze and um, I was very scared because I didn't know what was going on and then I started to get very sharp pains in my chest where my opening was and um, I remember just telling my mom you know something's wrong I don't know what it is but I don't feel right and so I just decided that I would sleep it off because it was pretty late and maybe I was just getting like in my mind I didn't maybe I didn't you know wasn't really feeling anything and I was just scared so I decided to lay down in my bed and maybe sleep would make everything better so I was laying down and it just got ten times worse I remember I could not move my body was completely frozen there was nothing I could do and then I started to kind of have a, have a panic attack because it my body was just like freaking out and my mom suggested that I take the bandage off so she had to help me into the bathroom where I you know had to take my bandage off I had to lay back in the bathtub and submerge my whole body once again to rip my bandage off and this went on from 11 at night till 3 in the morning so it took me that long to get my bandage out of my chest because the bandage like I had said the gauze kind of adhered itself inside of my skin so in order for me to get it out I had to be super careful because it's so painful for you to sit there and to like rip something out of your open flesh it's so painful and um anyway the kind of the end of that issue or that um situation that was when I found out that I had some type of bad reaction and I was allergic to honey so with that being said um I was still on antibiotics from the um, wound care specialist since he thought it would be a good idea, it wouldn't hurt to go on antibiotics um, during this whole process until they found out what was actually wrong with me. And I had gone back to him and I um, had seen some type of improvement in my chest. It was still terrible the way that my, the condition of my chest was in, it was still very, very bad, but um, it did look better and it did feel a bit better from the time I had seen him first. And um, he had gotten the lab results back from the culture of my chest and um, he had basically sat down and told me that um, they're in the lab that they send the cultures to, they only test for the, um, the I guess you could say like 200 most popular infections and 
Uh, my chest had come back negative to any type of infection that was in that 200 range category and um, they still to this day do not know what had happened to me but um, he continued with the antibiotics um, to help my chest because we did see some type of improvement in the meantime and um, I continued to go back to him I want to say probably every two to three days um, just to keep up with that and to help um, to make sure like everything was okay and just to really stay on top of things like that and anyway the last time I had went back to him he had told me that um, if I had waited one more week to come see him or to get help of you know whatever was going on with my chest um, the infection that was in my body would have entered my bloodstream and attacked my heart which would have meant I could have died which is very very scary and just to hear that it immediately brought me to tears because it's like this person that's sitting in front of me just saved my life and um, if my mom didn't make the decision to bring me to this doctor I couldn't I might not have been here today and that's so scary but it, I'm like so grateful to have my mom in my life and <laughs> so grateful for that doctor who helped me and um you know it's just crazy to think that I might not have been here today if that um if I had waited to go see the doctor I'm sorry I got emotional talking about this because it's not something that is easy for me to talk about but um I continued with the course of the antibiotics and my chest fortunately healed over and now I am left with these scars on my chest which is where um, the majority of the problem or the whole issue of this happened and um, oh, sorry and these scars that I have on my chest are called keloid scars so they're basically just like it's the way that my body healed and there's nothing I could really do for them because if they were to cut open my keloid scars um, they would grow back twice as big as what they are now but the good thing about this is that I um, can get steroid injections to help because they do get very itchy and they are painful at times um, and they do help with the, the color um, and the size of them. So I do get routine steroid injections in my chest. And I am not going to lie, they are very painful. They're not fun. I don't look forward to it. But I know in the end that um, it's all going to work out and it's going to be for the best. And um, anyway, that is basically my scar story. And um, I just want to say throughout this whole process, I learned so much. I learned what it's like to look at life differently, to look at the positives of the situation and to be grateful for everything you're given in life because you honestly never know what life can throw at you and you never know what might happen and if I could say one thing to you just to be grateful for your health most importantly. There are so many people in, there, in the world that are fighting for their life daily and you never know when something as precious as life can be taken away from you. But like I said, that is basically everything that I want to share with you all today. And if you have any questions, please leave them in the comments below or follow me on my social media and I'll be happy to answer any of your questions. And I think that's about it. So I just want to say thank you guys for listening to my story. Bye.